Fifth grade unit three, very friends. Just like last year, this unit is about adding and subtracting fractions in topic A. What's new is that in topic B, we've added in coordinate planes, patterns, and data. Please notice that topic A is the major work. That is where you should focus most of your time and energy. Topic B is additional work or a standard that's not even in the common core. So you wanna kind of de-emphasize topic B if you're running behind. You might ask, why are we combining this content with this content? These two things don't seem related. And you're not wrong. The main motivation is when you look at the calendar, we finished topic A right kind of early in December. And that left just about two weeks, two and a half weeks before we take winter break. We thought, wouldn't this be the perfect time to fit in some of this content that maybe is a little more fun, a little less mathy before the holiday? What I would encourage you though, is if you get behind and you're getting into January and you haven't finished this content, please don't let it derail you. It's important that we move on to unit three where we have more major work rather than getting too stuck in this content if we get behind. All right, so back to some information. When we think about unit three, fractions, why are we doing fractions in unit three again? I just wanna remind you, as we said in unit two, that fractions are major work. They're so important and they're, they can be difficult. We wanna make sure that we don't rush it by pushing them off until later in the year. Take the time now to build a really strong foundation. The other piece to this is that in unit two, you've already been working on fractions, multiplying and dividing. You gave, you gave students an opportunity to practice making models. Now that they have that foundation built, they can dive into unit three, which might be a little more challenging since they have unlike denominators. All right, coherence. Let's make connections back to fourth grade. In fifth grade, you're adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. That unlike piece is new, but the idea of adding and subtracting fractions is not new. They've been doing that since fourth grade, combining and separating pieces. Another thing they've been doing since third and fourth grade is finding equivalent fractions. So you can really leverage that knowledge of equivalent fractions to help them as they add and subtract unlike denominators in fifth grade. When we think about those denominators, we wanna think about them as units. If I'm adding five oranges and three oranges, that's easy, they're both oranges. I have eight oranges. If I'm adding five dogs and three dogs, same thing, all dogs, eight dogs. Five tens and three tens, that's eight tens. So when we think about fractions, if I have five eighths and three eighths, I'm talking about the same unit. Those are all eighths. They're all the same size piece. And that's why I can add them so easily. Five eighths, three eighths, eight eighths. Really focus on that unit. And that helps to understand why when we have different units, it gets a little more complicated. Well, I have four pieces of fruit. I have four animals. I've got, I don't even know what, because I've got three eighths and one fourth. Those are different sized pieces. I'm not sure what I have. That kind of builds that foundation for why when you really think about the unit, it helps to understand why we need to have like units in order to combine them. This quote, oops, I find to be really helpful. Students should explore a variety of strategies for finding a common denominator, including examples in which one denominator is a multiple of the other, like in A, finding common multiples, like in B, and multiplying the denominators, like in C. No matter which strategy students use, it's important for students to have many experiences to understand why a strategy works. Sure, we could always just multiply our denominators together to get our common denominator, but it's helpful and meaningful and mentally just engaging to think about times when you don't have to do that, to compare and contrast these different problems and how you would solve them. Be mindful about the problems that you're giving students. Here's another quote that I find to be helpful. When we're finding common denominators to add and subtract, we can think of this task as 
rewriting an equivalent problem to make it possible to add or subtract equal parts. If you find that students express doubt about the equivalence of two problems, is this problem really the same as this problem? That should be a cue to you that they don't actually understand equivalent fractions on a conceptual level. And you wanna make sure that you're using lots of visuals and concrete tools and not just rushing to a procedure. When you say multiply two thirds times four to get eight twelfths, well, that's not really true. We're not multiplying by four. So just be careful of your language so that you make sure students really understand what they're doing and why it works. All right, topic B. I'm going to go through this much more quickly because this is additional content, but just a couple quick notes. First, you've got those standards about graphing. Make sure you read them because they're a lot more conceptual and meaningful than just plot a point. And I want to mention that we live in a very cool city where our own city's map from way back in the time of William Penn looks like a coordinate grid. We've got City Hall in the center, we have Rittenhouse, and what else? This is Logan Square, Franklin Square, and oh, this is Washington Square. All right, we've got Penn's map. It could be really cool to help students make that connection to their own city and to think about why graphing is actually helpful. I can locate points on a map if I have a language to help me communicate them. Of course, in fifth grade, you're only operating in the first quadrant. If you Google the Community-Based Mathematics Project of Philadelphia, you can actually download an entire lesson built around Penn's map and graphing using fifth grade standards. Then we come to the standard about patterns. You're gonna have to pause if you wanna see the various um, problems that I pulled from the PSSA released content, but I think what you'll see is that there's a lot of different types of problems that students may face related to patterns. We move through them pretty quickly because it's not the most important content, but you might want to think about having a pattern of the week or a center in your inclusive student activities with patterns as you move through the year. They're a really great problem solving opportunity. So again, pause if you want to take a look at these various released items. Then we come to these, the data standard, which you'll notice the code looks different. That's because it's eligible content. It's not even in the common core. Make a comparison between what students did in fourth grade and what they did in fifth grade. You'll notice that line graphs are totally new. They actually have done the other graphs before, so that'll be a review. And what we find students struggle with is that idea of an appropriate scale. So thinking about that scale is really important as we think about our graphing. I'm just gonna leave you with this last reminder of some terms that we want to avoid and some terms that we want to use instead. Good luck with fifth grade unit three. And I'll just reiterate, again, if you get behind, your focus is topic A, don't drag